Welcome everyone to the Kendall Report where I share my 40 years of experience to help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. Remember to subscribe, like, and share these videos. Well, this week is going to be an action-packed week. I mentioned that there was a big party going on in Wyoming this week. Well, it's a virtual party. It's not an actual physical party like they usually have, but there's going to be a lot of discussions between all of the central bankers. There will be international bankers involved in this presentation, as well as academians, private sector economists, and a whole lot of other folks hanging around this so-called virtual symposium. The most interesting thing that has already been put out front is the title of the symposium, which is Navigating the Decade Ahead. So these folks aren't thinking about next year or the current situation. They're planning for the decade ahead. They know that things have been disrupted and destroyed at levels that none of us really can comprehend yet. So they're going to be making long-term plans. But other things that they're likely to talk about, in my opinion, will be universal income, the possibility of changes in currency and dollar swaps, a lot of other elements that's going to be needed to move forward. Now, everybody's expecting yet an, a second run on the COVID situation, which is certainly likely as we come into the fall flu season, who knows what we're going to be dealing with there. If the economy gets shut down again, I don't believe it will be able to handle that much stress. So it's going to be quite tenuous as we go forward. That's why the symposium is so important and what we hear from it. There's going to be a lot of things decided that you're not going to know about until they're ready to tell us exactly what's going on. And that will be released strategically over the next several months. But make no mistake, this is a significant event that's going to be happening. This definitely will set the tone for expectations throughout the week. I don't expect to see a lot of negativity until Powell speaks on Thursday and then on Friday when we hear the joint statement from the results of the talks from the symposium. So this will be a very big week. Just know that the ultimate outcome of the symposium will be a coordinated effort of all the central banks as they will come together to stimulate the economies. And in spite of the deadlock in the fiscal side between the House and the Senate, I'm expecting after this week's announcement from the Fed and the central banks that these folks all of a sudden will be able to come up with a deal and they'll have a fiscal response as well. They know that the importance of having a fiscal response along with the monetary is critical to moving everything forward. As we look at what's coming out economically this week, on Tuesday, we start to see some housing numbers coming out. The FHFA price index will be out and that will demonstrate the stability in the housing markets. The other thing we will get is housing starts, permits, and there's several metrics that will be out during the week. So the big numbers that will come out will be the typical Thursday unemployment claims expected to show under a million again. I'm also expecting to see that continuing number decline again this week. The big number on Thursday is the GDP. It's expected to be on chain, showing the same drop that was estimated last month. My expectation is that there will be an upward revision. It won't be minus 32. It might be minus 31, 30, some other number. They're going to continue to play with this metric to be able to present the best possible viewpoint that they can. It's important that they posture every number that's released right now to keep the stability in the economy. The reports that come out, including some of the other metrics that will be out this week, will definitely continue to reinforce that things are getting better or at least stable. So in conclusion, this week is going to be action-packed. There's going to be plenty of news. A lot of things are going to have to watch. Meanwhile, market sentiment will continue to drive the markets as there's going to be very little negative anything that comes out this week. So I'm looking at an extension of what we saw last week continuing this week. Let's take a look at the charts and see how this week is setting up. Beginning with the review of the WaveTech database, 
Over the past several sessions, I've been talking about the liquidation that continues to occur in the short-term database. There are over 2,000 cells for Monday morning. It looks like it's going to be a stronger opening, which is the best time to sell off of these models. So this is a very positive event. But what's going on here is we're seeing this short-term rotation as the markets are making new highs. What is the short-term wave tech database doing? It's selling into these new highs, into these lofty areas. So there's a very positive rotation happening up here of stocks that have been extended in this rally. Now, overnight, the futures are showing a, a positive open and it appears we're going to move uh, well above the 3,400 level. But the expectations for the short-term database is a continuing liquidation of these long signals, and I'm still looking for about a 42% range. Now, one of the things that I've been discussing as we go over and look at the weekly models, the weekly models continue to get a positive rotation. There were about 900 new buys in the weekly models. This has pushed the weekly bullish percent up to 68.98%. As I've been discussing over the past several weeks, I continue to expect to see a positive rotation on the intermediate models, which means the longer term aspects of this market are still becoming more bullish as we look six months and nine months down the road. As I have been discussing over the past three to four weeks, as my expectation is that we'll move to around 74% bullish. At that time, we'll start to see a minor rotation in the intermediate database. Going back to the all stats page, about two weeks ago, I discussed how the that the short term database had had fulfilled 90% of the expected returns. It was one of the highest levels we've seen in the history of the database. It is now down to 78 with all these liquidations that are occurring. This number will continue to drop. And what we're seeing here on the short term database is a recycling of a lot of trends. There will still be a consolidation on the secondary stocks while this happens, and this will set up a healthy tone for the next several months as we go forward. This rotation is likely to continue for another three to four weeks before we start to see a bottoming phase and begin to see traction come back in on the short-term models. The intermediate database continues to have expectations looking out at approximately 160 to 180 days. So there's a lot of positive market ahead. When I talk on a short-term basis that I see some negative elements starting to emerge. It was all on the short term and the intermediate continues to evolve in a very positive pattern. As we look at the E-minis, they are up 17 handles right now, up a half a percent, printing at 34.10.25. The high has been 75. We're right at the London Open right now, suggesting a much stronger opening for the morning, and this is going to push the cash markets well into some key levels in the week right off of the bat on Monday. I don't like seeing these type of really strong openings on Monday. They're likely to get faded, especially with all the news and the events that are occurring this week. This is going to set up some potential volatility just printing this high early in the session. But what we're seeing here as the PPMs are starting to pick up a little bit. We're seeing a slight acceleration as PPM1 is now at a 0 0.17, 0 0.30, and 0 0.31 on PPM2 and 3. Something I haven't discussed for a while, that trade that came on back on May 5th at 28.47 is still long. This is now a, over a 600-point long trade, and this thing just continues that creepy crawler formation I haven't talked about for a while, but we continue to climb higher and higher. There are some key numbers, and high target now is suggesting that we could go as high in this pattern that we're breaking out of toward the 3574 level before we'll see a top. Last week, I discussed some of the old calculations that I had done, and the minimum target was 3515. You may recall a couple weeks ago, I talked about some calculations for the top of this sequence being a minimum of 3514. And now with these Fibonacci projections coming out of the market, now suggests 3514, the 
possibility of 3574. The extreme that is being projected now is 3685. And these are very big numbers. If we see an acceleration over some key numbers on the weekly charts on the cash market, which I'll discuss in a minute, we could see a sharp acceleration from here. I've been discussing about these potential risks, but what's driving these indexes are the big tech stocks. These things just seem to be running out of control. As we take a look at the cash S&P, the upward projection on this pattern, extreme high target right now on the daily chart is 34.65. I've been discussing the three-day volatility indicator, and it has dropped back to around 16 handles again. It bounced up to 30. It's been very volatile over the past several sessions. As we look at the market grid on the daily chart, there's some key numbers to watch today. The R3 number is 34.19. It's likely we're going to print above that. The RXT number is 34.26 for today. It's possible that we could test that level today, which co coincides with that some of those other projection numbers that I mentioned just a few minutes ago. The weekly chart also will come into play today as 34.26 is R2, R3, 34.41 with the extreme of 34.55.41. And we could see these levels challenged as well. We've been climbing within the grid over the past several weeks. We've not exceeded that like we have seen some of the numbers on the NASDAQ be, get exceeded. The S&P has remained within its primary volatility ranges. PPM1 starting to turn back up. PPM2 and 3 are very robust. We're not going to see any major declines from this level. We're going to continue to grind this market forward. And the key level on the downside for this week is going to be 33.83. And the maximum extreme would be the S2, which is 33.68. I don't see us getting anywhere close to that. In fact, there's only a 30% probability to take out 33.83 with the way that we're going to open in the morning. Reviewing the NASDAQ futures, this is the weekly chart. We're seeing some very significant numbers come into play here. I remember just a few weeks ago, I discussed the NASDAQ going to 11,000. Now it looks like we're heading for 12,000. There's some projection numbers that I will show you that are very significant. But looking at the market grid, we're printing at the R1 level on the weekly at 11,661. The high has been 11,633. We're getting very close to that number. Break over that level, then you're likely to see an R2, R3 level. As far as the week's range go, we're looking at S1, R2. And the same thing on the S&P as we're looking at S1, R2 on the S&P as well. As we look at the daily, you'll see the high target. The minimum now is 11,827 with the mid target of 12,202. So that is my expectation for this week would be 11,827, 12,202. Critical level will be 11,383 would be S2. I don't see it's getting below that level on a daily. We did print on a low 11,407 S1 is 11,433. So we printed just below that level and now we've rebounded and we're up at 11,562 right now, already printing toward this daily number of 11,072. So expect the potential of moving to the R3. The final market for tonight will be gold. Gold continues to decline below its 10-day moving average at 1963.30. As we look at the market grid for gold, that 1919 number is showing up on the daily charts this time. The low so far today has been 1937.60, S1, 1933. If that gets taken out, then expect to see that 1919 number. The extreme for the Day is 1891, but there's substantial support at the 1904 level. The weekly chart, the reason why 1904 is so substantial, we're looking at the 10-week moving average with a PPM of a plus 9.2. 
which suggests there's only a 10% probability for gold to decline under, 19, under 1905. If it penetrated that, has a very low pro probability, suggesting if it did trade down toward that level, and I've talked about this over the past several days, between the 1920 and 1905 level, that is going to be the key area where you can actually take a long position. You can go long against this 10-week moving average with the strong upward PPM that's going to support this market. So that would be an ultimate buy, but it's going to be for a trade. So the range for this week is likely to be an S1, R2, which suggests a 1914 to a 2015 level. So about 100 point range on gold this week. It's possible that we could get an S1, R1. We'd top out around 1979. I'll be updating this during the week, so we'll have plenty of time to look at that. This will complete the video. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow night.